This video was one whole year in the making. I'm going to take you through the process of what I did to go from this to a harvest you won't believe. Stick around. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help you take your gardening to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. Sweet potatoes take a long time to mature, like seven to nine months. So if you are especially in a northern climate or, or one that's you know has cold winters, short growing season, you need to get them started right now. Ideally, you would start them six to eight weeks before your last frost date. That gives them plenty of time to get going and rooted before you have to put them out in the garden. So that's where we're going to start. And we're going to start with the humble sweet potato. Um, this is an organic sweet potato that we grew last year. So I'm going to be starting it from that. Organic is always best uh, only because some sometimes potatoes in the store, sweet potatoes as well, are sprayed with a sprout inhibitor. And it's just a chemical that keeps them from sprouting. It gives them a longer shelf life. We want them to sprout. So if you can find an organic sweet potato, that would be best. What we want to do is create slips from this sweet potato. Slips are just long sprouts that you snip off and then root. Now the one big thing that inhibits the sprouting, other than the sprout inhibitor, is rotting of the sweet potato. And that's going to give you some problems sometimes where it starts to rot before you have enough uh, slips that you need. One way that I've found to avoid that problem is to give the sweet potatoes a vitamin C or ascorbic acid soak. To do that, take two 1000 milligram vitamin C tablets and put them in a blender with a good amount of water. You want the water level uh, to be able to submerge pretty much the whole sweet potato. So see how much water you need for that, depending on the width of your blender will vary or what you're gonna pour it into. Um, but 2000 milligrams of vitamin C will do the trick. So you wanna cover as much of the sweet potato as possible and let it sit for about 15 minutes. Now last year, Noah and I did an experiment. We tried three different ways on getting sweet potato slips to sprout. So I'm gonna take you through those three ways, show you the updates, how they grew, and you can pick for yourself which method you want to use. I know I have my personal favorite. For the first method, I use the, the way that a lot of people have done it. Um, I've seen people try to sprout avocado seeds this way, and that is just to take three toothpicks and a cup of water. Um, now, when you are putting your, your sweet potato in the cup of water, you wanna make sure the bottom is down, and the bottom is the fattest part of the potato. And then just basically start sticking the three toothpicks in. Now hold it closer to here. Straight in. That's good. Now we'll break this off. Doesn't need to be that long. Okay, another one. Gotta hold it closer to the potato. Is it there? Mm -hmm. Okay, last one. There we go. All right, now we put it in the water, like so. Now the next two ways are basically the same way, just with different medium. And that is planting the sweet potato halfway deep in either uh, indoor potting mix or perlite or vermiculite. Now the idea behind perlite or vermiculite was to increase the drainage, to really keep that potato uh, moist, but not too wet where it would rot. So we let all three methods grow under grow lights, or if you have a sunny windowsill, that's just fine for sweet potato slips. Uh, you need about four hours of sun in that window to really give them a, a good, good vigorous start. But we let those grow for 30 days. Let's check back in and see how we did. So, so far, the water one has a lot of roots, as you can see. They have a lot of roots, so that one's doing pretty good. And then there's the perlite that has a little bud right there. And then on the bottom, you can't really see the roots because the perlite is white. So you can't really see the roots. I'm sure it has one. lots. Yeah. And then this one has the bigger sprout. 
and if you look at the bottom, you can see the roots in. Yeah, if you look at the bottom, you can see the roots. If you look at the sides, you can also see the roots. All right, we're off to a good start root-wise. Let's give it another 30 days. So at the 60-day mark, eight weeks, let's see what happened. Let me show you the water one first. Lots of roots. One tiny, tiny little sprout. I mean, it's barely like, it's like an eye. I'm not gonna be doing it this way ever again. Okay, the other one, how about perlite? A little better. There's little sprouts here. The end though is, oh, I just poked a hole in it. It's soft and a little bit rotten. So if that happens to you, and you still get, need, need some growth here, you can just cut that part of the uh, sweet potato off. Get all the brown part off of it, and it will last a little longer. So, you know, not much to write home about here. If, worst case scenario, we could get a couple of plants off of this. And then there was the one in potting soil. Ready to see it. Whoa, we've got plenty of slips on this one potato. The potato is still firm all the way through. So from now on, potting soil, at least for me, is the way I'm gonna go. When your slips look like that, it's time to root them. All right, so all you need is your sweet potato with the slips and a couple of jars or cups or whatever you have. And we want slips that are about six inches long not too much longer so these really tall ones here i'm going to leave those for now and you can snap them off just like that and these are actually this is a little short but it'll work you can just kind of pluck these leaves off or you can cut them off we're going to leave the top couple on drop them in the water that's pretty much as difficult as it gets. Now, underneath the ground, or the uh, soil, you might get some that are already rooted. So that just gives you a head start. So I'm gonna go ahead and pluck off some of these leaves anyway. This one's going to have a lot of roots. Look, it's growing out from completely underneath the soil. Look, right here. So seriously, this one could go in the ground. That one could totally go in the ground right now. But I'm going to wait. And do them all together because that bed needs to be prepared. So if you already have some like that with roots, I'm just gonna take some little pots just to hold me over for the time being. Just kind of spread the roots out, cover them up with a little potting soil, water them. And we're just gonna continue to grow these roots um, and plant them at the same time as these. Now, if you didn't get enough off of your sweet potato, keep it watered, put it back where you had it, and it'll grow a whole new batch. Put them in a sunny windowsill, and within two to three weeks, they will have roots and they'll be ready to go outside. They're actually rooting pretty well. Here's the ones in water. So, and that's a good root system right there. And now I can't get them back in. And then the ones in pots actually got a little close to the grow light, so they're kind of fried, but they'll still be okay. And they've got a good root system developed as well. All right, so I'm going to take these out here and see what I've got. I've actually got quite a few here, just tease them apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
probably too many for this bed, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do, I'm going to clear some of this away. I'm going to put four on each half, I guess. I've already got drip in place. All I'm going to be using in the hole is the uh, Neptune's Harvest Crab and Lobster. I'm not going to use the kelp meal because that will just give added nitrogen. The thing with sweet potatoes is they already grow like crazy with their vines, right? So we don't need to give them extra nitrogen, but they do want a good amount of phosphorus, which is the middle number. So that's what this has the most of um, because that's for root development. And with sweet potatoes, we're looking to harvest the roots, even though the sweet potato leaves are edible. So, you know, but you don't, you, you don't need to fertilize for leaf growth because they will automatically give it to you. And there's going to be nitrogen in the uh, tomato and veg that I'm going to feed them throughout the season, but it's the lower number. All right, so I'm just going to make four holes here and put a handful of crab and lobster in each hole. And take our sweet potato slips. And they can be buried a little bit deeper than what they were, but that's not that important. All right, I'm gonna put the mulch back. Some macadamia nut planted by a squirrel. So throughout the season, I'm going to be fertilizing every couple of weeks with the Neptune's Harvest Tomato and Veg, which is a 242, meaning four is the middle number and it's the highest and it's phosphorus for root development. And that's what you want, not a lot of extra nitrogen, which would be the first number. And this is a great foliar feed too. So you want to make sure that we water the leaves as well as the soil. That's really all there is to it. Those will grow in there for the next several months. And then when it comes to probably fall, uh, late August, September, maybe even October, the leaves will start to yellow, which is a good sign. And that is when it's going to be time to harvest them. So of course, I'll keep you updated throughout the season and bring you along for sure to hopefully harvest pounds and pounds of sweet potatoes out of that one little raised bed. Well, unfortunately that never happened because we ended up moving to our new homestead. And if you're not following our crazy adventure with everything that it takes to develop our new little farm and gardens, make sure you go over and subscribe to our newest channel, Next Level Homestead. So even though we didn't get to check in on the growth, just know it was rampant. Sweet potatoes grow like crazy and they spread. So you do need to give them a large area or like I did, I had them in a raised bed so they could spill over onto the ground around it. So around the same time that I planted mine, I gave extra uh, slips that I had rooted to my sister-in-law, Tammy, and we planted them in her garden. So fortunately, I was able to go back around Thanksgiving and it was past time to harvest them. And what a harvest it was. I can't believe how much these have taken over. They're insane. The weeds, it's just, it's out of control. Well, you, you didn't know how to harvest it. No. So I'll give you that. And there's a lot of weeds, but honestly, how could you even get in to weed it? You can't. You can't. Couldn't even mow the lawn around it. So it, look at it. It even, they are so insane underneath there that it actually even took over. Uh, yeah. Maybe we can harvest them in time for Christmas. For Christmas. So yeah, so you can eat sweet potatoes fresh right out of the garden. However, it is best to let them sit for two to three weeks and that kind of con condenses the sugars, mm -hmm. concentrates the sugars so they taste better and have that creamy, sugary flavor. Yum. Let's go get some shovels. All right, shoveling. That doesn't quite look like the ones I eat from the organic grocery store. Oh, my gosh. I, gosh, she's taking on a life. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, no. No, a snail. Look at that. That's a good Sliced one. in half with butter. 
It's a good one. This is insane. It looks like a colon. It does look like a colon. <laughs> so, you see it's green? Yeah. So on a regular potato, a green potato, you don't want to eat. It's poisonous. Mm. But sweet potatoes aren't related to regular potatoes. They're actually related to morning glories and the green color. It probably won't affect the flavor or anything, but it's certainly not poisonous. Look! I see the biggest one. We've got all different sizes. It's insane. This is gonna be a monster. I wonder if I can pull it up. Mm, no. Oh, oh, look at that! Oh my gosh. Did you get that? That's yeah. crazy! Yeah, I saw that. I saw that oh, thing. That's been eaten on by snails, look. <sighs> what? Slugs. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. That is, okay, maybe not grocery store shelf pretty, but. But that's a winner, winner. Chicken. A winner, winner chicken dinner, isn't it? Yeah. Winner, winner yummy dinner. Winner, winner chicken dinner. Winner, Look. Winner. Then they're all loose right under there. It's like, you know, 15 per bunch of roots. You'll know it's time to harvest your sweet potatoes when the vines start to turn yellow or just before frost. If you don't get frost, then when the vines start to turn yellow. If you live in a mild climate like we do, the vines might just continue growing. At that point, you're gonna see the sweet potatoes sticking out of the ground, ready to harvest. They're gonna look like sweet potatoes, big, fat, plump. And uh, at that point, in a mild climate, you'll know it's time to harvest. All right, so I'm gonna advertise my, I do not weigh that much. Well, it was just Thanksgiving. That's true. 180, okay. What does it say now? Two ten. Ten. So Two thirty. Seventy pounds. If Tammy comes back, we can tell her. Hey, take a guess at how many pounds? Twenty. Thirty. Forty. Uh, 55 pounds. Oh. More? I'm gonna be eating yams for the rest of my life. Uh, 65 pounds. Uh, 75 pounds? Yeah. 70 pounds. 70, 70 pounds of yams? If we put them in a nice dark place, right? They can dark get their, cool. sugar, their sugars going. Yep. Sugars going. Cool, dark place, <laughs> and they'll last for several months. Did you see some of these crazies? Yeah, pick up some of the big get ones. Get that big, crazy these guy. Ones, these are hugging each other. Oh, oh! Is that crazy? I mean, I was shocked, and I am so excited to grow my own again this year and be able to harvest them as I didn't get to do last year. But Tammy did give me quite a few potatoes because she had some to spare. So this is one of them that I'm going to go ahead and plant today. And this year, I'm going to keep uh, you up to date on what's going on here because we don't plan on moving, hopefully, ever again. Let me know if you're going to be growing sweet potatoes this year, and I really hope you do. I don't think there was ever a uh, harvest that was more fun than that, and they last a long, long time. So you can keep them and keep, you know, have something to eat, especially throughout the winter months. So it's a really good self-sufficiency crop. And after this entire video, you can't say you don't know how to grow sweet potatoes. I think I've included everything here. If I miss something and you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments and I'll try to get to them uh, as best I can. And again, they take a long time. So get them started ASAP. I'll see you guys next time.